Marvel's run of Godzilla King of the Monsters was a unique example of the big lizard being licensed out to non-Japanese companies. Until this point, Toho Studios, the producers of Godzilla, kept a tight hold on its properties, especially when dealing with other countries. The Marvel-produced comic was its own original series, but was also set in the Marvel Universe. There are tie-ins to S.H.I.E.L.D. and some of the other minor Marvel characters get their time to shine while attempting to handle the radioactive dinosaur. Before his big showdown with the Avengers, Godzilla got toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Fantastic Four, though he was only 20 feet tall at the time. The Big G was still recovering from being shrunken down to such a small size that he had an epic battle with a New York sewer rat. No, not Pickle Rick, Godzilla. The Avengers finally come into play in the last two issues of the King of the Monsters run, and it's a great big silly mess of Bronze Age era comic book goodness. Shortly after fighting the Fantastic Four, Godzilla is sent back to the age of the dinosaurs, evidently so he can be with his own kind. Of course, as nearly all overly clever attacks against the Big G tend to go, it fails, and he's returned to the modern era and begins wrecking havoc on New York. Fortunately, the objectively strongest character in the Marvel Universe, J. Jonah Jameson, is there to shake his fist at him before getting blasted with hot air, which causes Jameson to hide under his desk. Seeing this, I do have to wonder if this scene was the inspiration for the iconic scene in Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, in which a very similar incident occurs with a Japanese businessman, albeit with a much more violent outcome than in the comic. After this, we're greeted by the Human Torch going to the Avengers HQ to let them know that Godzilla is stomping around the area, because apparently a giant green dinosaur destroying a major metropolitan area isn't enough to show up on the Avengers' radar. Regardless, Iron Man, Thor, and Vision all gear up to go out and deal with the big green threat. The Human Torch, being as cocky as ever, brags about his immunity to Godzilla's radioactive breath before being swatted out of the air like a pesky fly by him. Thor gets an impressive blow in on Godzilla, with the text even proclaiming that the hit apparently inflicted pain on Godzilla to a level he's never known. Sheesh, Thor, calm down, bro. Fortunately, Yellowjacket and the Wasp provide a wonderfully absurd solution to the problem of getting him into the nearby river by going into his ear canal and flapping their wings real hard. I mean, if it works, it works, right? And in this case, <laughs> it does. Godzilla falls into the river just like they planned. But a new problem arises as Godzilla reaches his full height once again. S.H.I.E.L.D., the Avengers, and the Fantastic Four are now tasked with stopping Godzilla before he can make it to the Empire State Building. While they look for a solution, the team is forced to minimize damage, desperately looking for a way to stop the massive beast before he destroys New York's most iconic landmark. Thor and Godzilla engage in what the Thing refers to as an inside-out tug-of-war, where both forces are pushing against the building, Thor trying to keep it up while Godzilla tries to knock it down. However, it doesn't end up being Force, or any of the Avengers that beat the King of the Monsters, but his trust in one of the original characters from the comic run, Robert Little Rob Takaguchi, who's able to calm the beast. Godzilla returns to the ocean while Spider-Man shows up just to snap one quick picture so J. Jonah Jameson doesn't yell his ear off. Not any more than usual, anyway. Even though the crossover with the Avengers is probably the most notable thing that happens in the comic book series, it's only a very small part of it. The Avengers only show up in issue 23 and 24, but there's a whole lot of stuff that leads up to the epic confrontation that is just as absurd and funny. Since it was the early Bronze Age of comic books, and just at the end of the Showa era of Godzilla, I wouldn't have it any other way. Since licensing out other Godzilla monsters from Toho would have cut into Marvel's already thin profit margins for these comics, the King of the Monsters series got a unique rogues gallery for the Big G to butt heads with. Instead of the classic Godzilla monsters like Rodan, Mothra, Mechagodzilla, and King Ghidorah, you get knockoffs like Yetragar, Batragon, Gilaron, and Red Ronin. Though I will admit Batragon and Red Ronin were actually pretty cool, and Yetragar was probably the closest thing we got to Godzilla vs. Kong since the two had their epic confrontation in 1962, so that's certainly a plus. In the comics, Godzilla largely plays his most well-known role as an anti-hero, often being the lesser of two evils fighting against the more destructive kaiju force. This is in contravention to the later Showa-era films of the time, however, where he's seen as the incorruptible protector of humanity. The comic largely follows a shield force led by Dum Dum Duggan, who's tasked with dealing with the green giant lizard however possible. A young man, known as Little Rob, serves as the pro-Godzilla Japanese side to the human story, providing the monster with some extra sympathy, and he's ultimately the one that gets Godzilla to stop his rampage and return to his home in the ocean. Unfortunately, the series officially ended with its 24th issue. Marvel decided to let the license lapse and officially ended the King of the Monsters run on a high note. As of now, this was the last time that Marvel and Toho Studios collaborated on the Godzilla property, but with his recent smash success around the world due to Legendary Pictures' Monsterverse franchise, is it possible we get to see the big green radioactive guy in the Avengers have a round two? And no, I'm not talking about the Hulk. Shockingly enough, they never got to fight in the comics, even with their similarities and shared origin. But maybe if we're really lucky, we'll get to see it in the future. With Godzilla's breakout success from the Legendary Pictures' Monsterverse series, and Marvel coming off its huge run with Endgame, 
These two properties may be feeling just bold enough to have a rematch between Earth's Mightiest Heroes and the King of the Monsters. While there isn't anything right now that would suggest something being in the works, it's fun to think about how another crossover between these two storied franchises would play out. As exciting as an Avengers vs. Godzilla film would be, it doesn't seem too likely. As successful as Godzilla vs. Kong was, bringing in some incredible numbers during the COVID-19 pandemic, even while being streamed on HBO Max, there is uncertainty that the American MonsterVerse series will continue at all. After Godzilla the King of the Monsters failed to impress at the box office, Legendary was ready to cut and run with the franchise, but Godzilla vs. Kong was already in production, so they figured they'd finish the run with that. The film ended up being a smash success, however, so now it's up in the air as to whether or not Legendary Pictures decides to renew the Godzilla license with Toho. If they do continue and Disney doesn't pick up the license, a film crossover between the two would be an intellectual property minefield that Atticus Finch wouldn't be able to traverse. Oh yeah, how's that reference? A comic book series featuring Godzilla and Marvel would be much more likely, however. Godzilla has actually found a good amount of success in American comics after the run with Marvel in the 70s. Dark Horse Comics picked up the franchise from 1987 to 1999. More recently, IDW had the rights to the Godzilla comics, making on and off runs from 2010 to 2019, featuring a number of Godzilla's official rivals to duke it out with during its run. So it's clear they aren't opposed to making comics for the King of the Monsters. Both the Godzilla and the Marvel properties are bigger now than they've ever been, and I'd say it's time to strike while the iron's hot, huh? Come on, let's finally see Godzilla and the Hulk go mano-a-mano. Big monster. Yeah, go get him, Hulk.